What time is it? 235. I'm going to start with some introductions in roll call. Uh, so for roll call, do we have Emily Sam Valian here? Yeah. I'm here. Yes. Jordan Orozco is not yet here. For Management Association, do we have David LeClaire? Not yet. John Wood? Here. With us. From faculty, Rod Foster? Not yet. Julie Kiotis? Not yet. Mary Erin Crook? Here. Very good. Um, from classified, do we have Jeff Wojcik? Not yet. Ann Sure, Not yet. Rudy Perez? Not yet. Gary Potts? Thompson. You're sitting, you know, uh, work the, is sitting in for Gary, and you're also here. You're off. Awesome. Very good. Resource representatives, Dr. Bell is not here. Anthony Brown is not here. No. However, we, be here the restroom break, so. we do have uh, Kanya Fennessy, who is our new uh, budget supervisor. Uh, she will be sitting in on this meeting uh, from this point forward. We have Diane Mandrafina, who is our director of fiscal services, uh, and Chuck Mancini with um, business services. What's that? And Hedva is our guest. Edra Weingart. She is making a, another appearance. Guest appearance. Guest appearance. Guest appearance. Well, yeah, you're more than welcome to join us for every BRAC meeting. Or you can come as a guest. Whatever you like. I think you should be in this room once a week from 2.30 to 4. And we'll just call it the BRAC meeting and you can have it for us. How's that? <laughs> no? You can just okay. have it by yourself. By yourself. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> so we had Julie join us. We had... Rod and Danny. Danny and who? Rod. Rod. So they are here. Yeah. They stepped out. They will be back. Okay. So we have the minutes from our last meeting, which took place on October 30th. Um, did everybody have a chance to go through them, or would you like a few minutes to go through them now? We had a chance. Okay. <coughs> I don't know if we did it, but we had a chance. Okay. Well, then let's give, let's give everyone a couple minutes. Do we have a motion? A motion to approve the minutes from October 30th. Very good, thank you. And do we have a second? Second. So we have a motion by Emily and a second by who? Chop. Very good. All right, so let me just kind of break away for a second. So this is the third meeting where I've had the pleasure of uh, talking with everybody, and each time I'm sitting in this chair, and every time I forget what the steps are that I need to do, you know, first, second, and third. So I go back and I look online at our BRAC meetings to talk about introductions and motions and minutes and all that stuff. And this is the third time I realized how much we're working and how much hair I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to make a request <laughs> to move the camera. <laughs> Where to? You could just sit The opposite side of the room. <laughs> okay. oh, I now, wait here. a minute. I always sit over <laughs> here. I don't want to move. Right. It's your <laughs> turn. <laughs> Is your turn. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, I don't get a second for that. <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay, so. Over here to this point. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is there a discussion about the minutes? problem is nothing helps. Yeah. <laughs> Except for exercise and eating right, but who wants to do that? All right, so uh, in favor, we did the motion and the second for the minutes. So uh, in favor, uh, uh, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Very good. I yes. I abstain. Julio abstains. Very good. Thank you. So we're now on to public comment. Are there any public comments regarding uh, for the committee? No? Okay. None. Very good. So we're now on to the discussion portion of the agenda. We have the 50% law follow-up. And so last month there were a number of questions that we were not able to answer for you or we were able to answer, but we wanted to make sure we were providing the correct information. So we did go back. There is an attachment in your package or online, whichever you brought with you. Um, we have a list of 11 items that we said we would follow up on. And so, Hedva, if I can, can we turn it over to you so you can kind of walk us through? Uh, sure. Okay. Do you want me to just read the questions and answer them? Or do I think so, okay. yeah, just to make sure that we got what everybody was looking for. Okay. Um, 
first one was what was the difference uh, in what we reported between 1314 and 1415, and, um, and it was uh, between the 53 percent versus 51 percent. Um, and the 1415 calculation, um, I actually think it's budget 1415, but actual 1314. So just to make that clear, and um, the uh, calculation uh, that we did this last year um, was it, it, it properly um, included uh, in the denominator um, stuff that was excluded from the calculation in the prior years, student transportation, administration fees on PARs, and amounts received from the retiree health benefits. The next question was, is professional development part of the 50% calculation? Is it included in the denominator as long as the activity related, it relates to is not community service or auxiliary, auxiliary services? In the programs, um, whether it's excluded or excluded on this, and, and I could go over this report with you, but one of the excluded programs or activities, if you wish, um, is like community service, ancillary services, auxiliary operations. So if professional development um, is part of those activities, it would be excluded from the um, calculation. Otherwise, it would be included in the denominator so as opposed to not part of the numerator. So just so everybody's aware, there are two handouts that go hand in hand. One is the breakdown of the items that you asked for feedback on, and the second is the handout for the program. Can I go back to question one? Sure. <coughs> Why, um, or can you explain why in the 14, 15 calculation those items were included but they weren't in the 13, 14, the transportation and fees? Um, I think it was just missed from my predecessor and since it didn't affect um, or it didn't reduce the percentage to other, uh, lower than 50 percent. It was not, um, there, it was immaterial and it wasn't made okay. notice to redo it. As long as we're over the 50 percent, if there's um, amounts, small amounts that are excluded, um, the auditors really don't, uh, they'll just buy off on it. They won't make you change it. How much you have to pay them to do that though? I wasn't here. <laughs> Lots of cash, right? so you can't trace yeah. it. So um, the objective is to make sure okay. that we comply with the law, right. and and okay. so their notations. That's what they're looking at. Yeah, that's what they're looking at, and their notations. Or uh, when I was doing it this year, I I was included it. Um, made sure that I complied with what they had recommended. So are those, the, I mean, is that the only reason if it went down 2%, right? 13, 14 was 53% and in 14, 15 it went down to 51%. And as far as you know, that's the, it, that accounted for that whole 2%? I would right? say most of it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts to it. So you can say plus here, minus here, and, yeah. you know, increase in the salary and the salary and increase in expenses both in the numerator and denominator. So th there would be a lot of moving parts to it. Sure. Okay. Thanks. So I think we're on number three. Okay. Um, I had provided, uh, you had asked for um, regulations. I had provided the Ed Code section um, and the link and the California Code of Regulations, Title V. And I gave you the detail, Division Six, Chapter 10, da 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 um, that, um, uh, also pertains to the 50% law. Um, the electronic version of the budget and accounting manual is on the state chancellor's office and I had provided a link on um, the question and answers for you um, if you needed to look for it for any reference. So this is a pretty thick manual. Yeah. That's no. why we didn't yeah. print it yeah. out and send yeah. it. Yeah. It's yeah. A binder. What it does is the, the, the education code gives you what the rules are. The state chancellor's office gives you how to, uh, they enforce it. And in their enforcement, they make you do a report called the this calculation 50%. And in their enforcement, they give you classifications and um, um, categories uh, very well defined. And, and that's what is in the budget and accounting manual um, that helps you um, code the accounting transactions to comply with the law. <coughs> okay. 
Okay. Uh, the next question was, is teaching in classrooms for counselors and librarians part of the 50% law? The counselors and librarians are, co are coded in an object code 1230 or 1240. When I referred to object codes on this schedule here, I had given us these object codes. It starts with 11100 and goes all the way down. And the way it translates into the report is it just chops off to the first two digits. So all the one ones go in this one line item, then one twos, one threes, etc. So counselors and librarians were part of the one twos. The specific, we code them as one two three zero and one two uh, four zero, and they're considered in the denominator in the calculation of the fifty percent law. And Danny has a question. Okay. Uh, when I uh, teach a, a full class, not the orientations, but a full class, it's like semester one class, I get paid out of a separate uh, cost center. Right. So I, I think that might wind up in the numerator. Yes? Right. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Thanks, Dan. So, well, the 12.30 is, so is the 12.30, um, it says non-instructional other, so is that for librarians and counselors as far as full-time and then the other one says 1240 says non-instructional mm -hmm. adjunct so is that the difference the one is full-time and the other is adjunct okay. that's correct yeah. that's correct um it's a good question the the next question was on overload um if overload is in the 50 percent calculation in general if it's instructional in other words if the faculty's in the classroom teaching as part of the overload it would be coded as instructional in the numerator. If not, it would just. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this will be an exciting video. That's called a Dutch tilt. <laughs> wow. <we're ready>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, no problem. Can you repeat what you just said? <laughs> um, uh, I was, we're talking about the overload if it's part mm -hmm. of the 50% calculation. If the overload is attributable to the um, classroom instruction, it would be in the numerator. If not, it would just be in the denominator. What are some examples of overload that wouldn't be in the classroom? In a classroom, yeah. yeah. I, I can't. A counselor or a librarian overload. That's an example. Oh, okay. But they're no. thought they were part of the fifty instructional. percent. So you're but they're still counted as part of librarians and counselors. In there. Are they are they towards the fifty percent or not? I can't remember. Sorry. Well, that's okay. <laughs> if you look at like for instance, object code one two one zero zero zero. If someone was categorized as a non non instructional contract overload, you would see that twenty six thousand, which is very little, in the denominator. Most of our overload are instructional. If you look at 131000, it's instructional mm. contract overload. You have $3.8 million that were included in the total. That was part of the numerator in the 50% law. So the 131, which is instructional overload, it says if overload is instructional, it is in the numerator. So that is in the numerator. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, but the, so this, the, like the non-instructional, so really, I mean, from this budget, the only one that we're talking about that is otherwise just in the denominator is the 121000 non-instructional contract overload. Correct. Okay. So, 121000. And, and the way, just so I can give you a little bit more detail, if you wish, on, on the spreadsheet that I did, I added a column in there that's not on the report, just to be more visual, the report has the instructional and then it has all the total. So I put what was um, in the instructional and sometimes there's other costs that are included in the total. So this way I can look at the two together, the first two columns add to the third column. So you can see how it's kind of split. Does that make sense? In the report that goes to the Chancellor's Office, it's asking for the buckets of money that are appropriate. So what Hedva did is, in the report that you're looking at, it's actually breaking out those dollars and cents. Okay. Does that make sense? I don't know. i got to look at it for a while. It's okay. Yeah. To Total CEE. To I'm looking at the top, <coughs> the title, the um, column headings. Total mm -hmm. CEE is... CEE is... That's, um, it's defined, and I just had it. Classroom, current expense of education. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Okay, so, um, sorry. Okay, so the first column, could you just, just go over that one more time? Sure. Because, because I thought you were saying you add yeah. the two together and it comes up to the total, but it doesn't but work it doesn't, that way, so yeah. I misunderstood how. Because like on the top line, it's 24 million something, and then there's... 29,000. Oh, oh, 29,000. Sorry, maybe it does work that way. Okay. Yeah, well, that the does, but there was... Okay. Sorry, so, so what is different in the second <laughs> column, if you're going, if this is instructional monthly salaries, and then you have an amount, and then what does additional cost mean? Like, what kinds of things? Things that would not, well, the easiest one would be like the non-instructional or the classified. Anything that's not in the first column is in the second column. Mm -hmm. So anything that's in the second column we can use? That would be part of, that's part of the, de that's a denominator. Denominator. Right. Okay. But the the report that the, that I had, we had passed out to you, just for clarification, you just, the questions before was, here's the numerator, and then you had all these total costs. And you said, well, what's included okay, in here? Okay, in okay, okay. So you tried to separate So I tried to separate to show you what's like denominator, what's only numerator, what's denominator, you. and then okay. in the total. Right. That was the attempt. Okay. Thanks for doing that. Sure. And then these darker black lines are totals down. Is yeah, right? these darker That's black lines okay. is the actual number you see. Okay. Well, like the twenty-five, like for what for instructional, the twenty-five million one eleven. Uh huh. That was the very first number in the first column in this fifty percent, the twenty-five one eleven. Okay. So do we do we have that one, or is that from last time, and we don't have that, that one right now? That was from last time. Okay. Okay. So I don't. Yeah. Okay. So I was trying, because you asked for oh, and yeah. they do, real they details, also, yeah. so I, what okay. I did was I kind of blew it out total. So you saw the right. components, okay. and this way I was able to also answer your questions, because right. I didn't have the components memorized. Okay. And they're also adding up horizontally, too. Right. Okay. So they're vertical and yeah. horizontal. So you, okay. have, you have two definitions. You have the object codes that, in minute detail, every single type of expense and that we have that are included. Um, and even the benefits where we, we split it between instructional and non-instructional. And then on the column headings where you have, it's identified by the state as the type of programs. On the last page, I identified those programs just so you could see like 100 is agriculture, 200 is architect, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in the report where it says give everything for 100 to 5,900, you would see what's included from one, what's, what is included in instructional. is all oh. the departments all the way down, okay? okay? And, then, and then it says on this 50% report, it's like 0, 100 to 5,900 plus 6,110. So in the numerator, it's also including 6110, which is the learning center, the learning resource center. It has its own program or activity, if, if, you, mm -hmm. if, you, if you, the way you would call it, anyhow. And then the total is everything from 60, 0100 to 6799, which would include all the administrative costs, and all, most of the administrative costs are going to be in the denominator, the classified. Mm -hmm. Then you have excluded activities that's not in the calculation, and those programs are attributed to the community service, economic development, ancillary service, and auxiliary operations. So and I those dollars are small. Sorry. And on the document that we got today, where would be the instructional monthly release time? That would, uh, that would be the next question that's coming up, but that would be the release time is non-instructional reassigned time, and that would be 127,000. And those amounts, which is 2.5 million, is in the denominator. Do you see it, Joe? So that, that accounts for all uh, reassigned time for instructional employees. So it does go towards the 50% lot? The so denominator. Yeah. The, okay. the denominator, but not the numerator. Correct. Yeah, okay. And the 10 faculty that have been reassigned to be deans are pulled out into that also? I would need to look at those particular people, but if it was code as it reassigned, it would be there. If they're actually, um, their job classification changed as some sort of a manager or supervision, 
then it would be in the 2000 series. So if they were left in the 1000 series, it would have been coded in 1270. I don't know their title, I'm not in HR, so I, I can't say definitively where it is. So, again, I'm just trying to, um, because it's here, and it, it looks like it's part of total CEE, -E, which is current educational, I forgot what you said. Current expensive, expensive education. That's okay, I have to have it here, I don't know either. <laughs> so, so, but it looks to me like it's being counted towards the 50%, and I thought you just said that that, or maybe I'm misreading this, but it looks to me like that 2.5 million, that reassigned time, is part of the numerator as well as the denominator, or am I misreading it? It's part of just, because uh, I added that extra column, it's part of just the denominator. The first column is the numerator, the second column is the, is, is. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it now. Now I'm understanding the chart a little. The numerator is the first column, the denominator is the second column. Okay, got it. Right, but so everything in the numerator is also in the denominator. But anything that's not in the numerator... Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 right, 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 I get okay. that. Yeah, okay. That's okay. helpful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no. I just I, want to make sure that, yeah, no, that I'm clear on what thanks. I'm saying. So, Julie, I'm not sure if this answers your question about the... I think you said the deans, right? Yeah. Uh, if you look at 1220... If the position is classified as a non-instructional administrator supervisor, it's that the salary is still classified as faculty. If you look at the um, FON numbers, okay, they're okay. still classified as faculty officially, but they're just given a one-year temporary reassignment gotcha. to be something else. Okay. Okay. All right, I think number eight. Yeah, we just did seven, eight, yes. Okay. Um, the benefit costs, um, those all start with object code threes. They're in the next couple of pages. And the if it if it's the the way LACO does it and it's appropriate, it, it, it prorates the benefits the way the salary's posted. So if the part of the salary is instructional, the benefit attributed to that salary would be instructional. If it was non-instructional, that part of the salary would be attributed to non-instructional. So if you see, there's, a, uh, there's quite a few line items. Every single type of benefit is, is sliced and diced in many ways, and you'll see the different columns where it is. And what is HWB? Health and welfare benefits. Health and welfare benefits. So that's the big one. Mm Um, the number nine, the staff who are part of the 50% calculation are not in classroom 100% of the time. Do their benefits get prorated? Uh, yeah, benefits follow their, what their, um, whether an instructional or not, depending on their assignments. Um, and it says confirm um, that the non-instructional salaries, regular status are not uh, part of the 50% calculation. I confirmed it there in the denominator. And the last question was, if 10% of the full-time faculty are 50% reassigned time, that the calculation for the 50% are prorated included in whole, and I did confirm all of that. So it's prorated, or is it whole? If they are, if a full-time faculty has part of their sign as reassigned time, then that prorated part would be in, in the um, not the denominator, if they are actually in the classroom, it would be in the numerator. Okay. So just, uh, again, I haven't looked at yes. that closely, but so where are the administrative salaries? The administrative salaries, depending on what they are, um, as Joe just pointed out, the one, two, two, non-instructional, you have administrative supervisors. One, 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 sorry, one, one, two, 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 two zero, zero, zero. Okay. Sorry, okay. Got and it. then, of course, there's manager salaries, but that should probably cover most of them. So the three uh, object codes that you want to look at when you look at the supervision, the management, and the administrator categories are 1, 2, 2, 0. Yep. And then if you go down, halfway down the page, the classified management salaries are 2, 1, 2, 0. 2, 1, 2, 0. And right underneath it for the classified supervision is 2, 1, 2, 5. Yeah. Perfect. So I think what's important and what we need to clarify is when we talk about management, management is not a group of positions. It's actually broken into three different categories. Okay, okay, okay perfect. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? They'll have them after you leave. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but are there any other questions? Run through those. So there's administ there's the one two two zero oh is what do you call that? That's so the I non instructional know. administrators. Non instructional. So like educational administrators. Yeah. Think, okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. So and any of the series one are related to the instructional types of salaries. Okay. Um, in the series twos, those mm -hmm. are the non instructional. So like the classified staff and the management staff. Um, and then two one two zero management that is non educational management. And then the classified supervision are all the supervisors. And which one does the president fall under? One, two, two. Mm -hmm. One, two, two? Right, mm -hmm. it should be. Because yes. it's okay. education. I assume, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right. And how many presidents are, are listed these days? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I have a question. Uh, this document includes every Penny accounted for for by this college. Only what's been spent in the general unrestricted fund. Oh, okay. Nothing so to do with grants. Right. Okay. Right. So when we talk, oh, wow. so when we look Correct. at dollars, what we're, what our primary focus is always going to be on are the general unrestricted dollars or fund O one, because the other dollars are, are for the period of time that we're getting them for the the contract or the agreement period they're coming. More than likely, it's not going to get reduced. Okay. It will generally sometimes get increased, but the fund one is what's the primary amount of money that is spent for operational purposes, salaries, utilities, um, buying supplies, those types of things. So fund one is really where our primary focus is always going to be. So and at the top of this, then on the <coughs> top left, it says fund 11, but it should say zero 01, right? No, or fund 11 in the new banner world is fund one. Mm -hmm. so uh, changing oh, worlds okay. on me? What? Yeah. We've been changing what? for the last year and a half. <coughs> but yeah. You tell me zero one is one one in banner. Yeah. That's right. Oh yeah, take a look and at one one it. actually so is or zero one is actually broken down into how many different Oh my god. There's there's so a few. one of, one of the things that will be coming to this numbers. Yeah. One of the things that will actually be coming to you guys when we finish it is a crosswalk from the old system to the new system. So fund one now is one one, one two, one eight, one four. But one if we don't want to cross the walk, then you can leave the room. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to. We don't want to walk the cross or cross the walk either. But yeah. So the manual that we had that everyone's used to, that multi-color uh, package of uh, funds and object codes and account numbers, that was that thick, will probably be doing that stuff. Yeah. All right, but. Yeah. Just a quick question, just just to make sure that I'm hearing this right. So, faculty member who's working on a Title IV grant doesn't show up in this report at all because they're working uh, in another fund, right? It depends. I mean, more than likely their salary... I thought you would say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> more than likely their salary will be paid by that grant. But if the person is working not just on that thing, uh -huh. then only a portion of the grant will pay for their salary. Fund one or a different fund will pay the, the difference. So if I'm working on a grant, 80% of my time, 80% of my time will be paid by that fund, 20% would be paid by something else. So only 20% would show in here if 20% is being paid about one, the other 80% is not gonna show up on Correct. this report. Okay. Yeah. And somebody asked me, uh, where does where does the money come from to pay off people's severance pay? <laughs> mm -hmm. I would have to look at each individual person. I mean, so, oh, well, there isn't a category here. No, it comes out of labor costs. So, so. Well, I mean, they were talking about Dr. Rocha was paid a certain amount, and they were saying, well, where do we come up with that? Money? Four hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, well where, where does that account? I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. we're we're. It comes out of the labor accounts. Well, when you say labor accounts. What are accounts, the labor accounts? So I, that's why I'm saying I would have to go back and look. My guess would be that it would be out of 1220. Yeah. 1220, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, out of the administrative yeah. 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 Wherever the individual is being paid is where it should come that from. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and what about legal? What account? Are, are legal expenses in one account, or, oh, I see, we have so one. So this list is actually all of the object codes that the college has. Mm -hmm. So if you go back, I think it's probably. In the fives. Which is it? In the fives. Mm -hmm. I see yeah. it. Five, so seven, three, zero, zero, zero. You got it? Yep, mm -hmm. there you go. Okay, It's so all in one account? It depends on what the topic is. <laughs> so we really always try to tie back the, the penny to the use of the penny. 
So here, legal expenses would be um, any work that we do with outside organizations if we need a, and this is not a good example, but if we need a legal opinion on um, something that is specific to technology. Okay. We don't have the internal ability to okay. do that. It would come out of that category. Okay. If we're talking about, um, let me see if I can find it. Um, let's say negotiations. That's a different category. That's what I was going to ask. So, yeah. like the attorney fees for negotiations, where right. there is actually a category for that. There is. I may be thinking of the options. Uh, the org code. No, it does. It all comes out of this five seven three zero. So the difference here. For 5740, those are all of our legal advertisements for when we have to run bids. Mm. Um, but Oh, that you're required to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought it was a, Heather, do you know? I thought it was a um, object code for, yeah. It's, 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 you put it in other services or something else. I'm not sure. Other services. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. And so that's we services. budget for trustee elections every year even when there isn't one, right? Correct. Yes. What happens at the end of the year? Today? Um, what I've had to do this year is if there's a need, an unforeseen need that I can't afford somewhere else, I've had to take it from there. Yeah. So you said not all legal fees are here. So if there were legal fees out of, or did, I'm sorry, is that yeah. what you said? I, correct, okay. yes. So how would you find the other, like if there were legal fees associated with acquiring banner in IT or something you don't line it out is that right so how would how would you know it comes out of this category 5820 for other services 5820 okay. okay so so all legal fees would it be accounted for between these two it should be primarily in that 5730 but again to de depending on what it is that the uh, expenses for it may be because of reporting purposes it may be more beneficial or appropriate to tie it to a different cost item. Mm -hmm. so it really depends on what it is that we're talking okay. about. So for clarity you're saying outside legal fees yes is that the question or well, no that wasn't the question well that was my next question okay. because this like the 573 doesn't our own internal counsel that I take it comes out of one labor costs uh, one, yeah. two, two. It zero. comes out of the two series. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's separate. Two the one Okay. okay. So management. Okay. So oh, class. Oh, oh, hers is out of, would be out of class. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. so not education. Right. Sorry. So that would be. She would be like two, one, two, zero. Two, one, two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Barrier. Mm -hmm. So what's included in um, these nicely titled instructional monthly other non-instructional other? What page are you on? One. First page. First page. So there's the second category. Mm -hmm. uh, so instructional monthly other, non-instructional other, instructional hourly other. These are um, we have these other. These would be like the stipends. These would be not reassigned time. Um, well, no stipends are down below. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you've got those in. So made? all stipends are in one category in this one four two zero zero zero. Let us find. Let us go back and figure out uh, what the other is, and maybe we can bring in some examples of what that would be. Right, and I guess what I'm wondering is, are legal fees and things like that getting um, tucked away in there? So, just to piggyback they would not, on that, they would not be. This no? is specific to instruction. So, and the and the work of the and any legal fees would not be specific to an instructional salary. So we have the you have the instructional category. Uh -huh. and expense for labor, and then you have a operational category for expense for legal costs. Okay. I hope I'm making sense. Yeah. So just one more time, and maybe you answered this, and I just want to make sure I was clear. So 573 and 582, do they, are they all inclusive of all legal expenses by the college, or the there are other places? There are other places depending on what it is that we're talking about. If we're talking about labor, the labor would be in 2120. If we're talking about legal, specific legal expenses, it would be in 5730. If we're talking about something else that may be related to like a negotiation of a contract for IT services, there's the potential that it would come out of 
other services, 5820. It really depends on what it is that we're, we're, we are tracking and we are expensing, and that's how it falls into the category. So, but are those then the three categories that would account for all legal expenses? Yes, and I would okay. say that 5730 legal expenses and 212, 2120 would be 90% of those. Right, right, right. And then 582 is the just the like a catch -up. Yeah. Okay. So when the college is defending a lawsuit or a potential lawsuit and there's a settlement, does that come out of labor? No. <clears throat> we have insurance policies. Um, we pay for those policies uh, on an mm -hmm. annual basis. We, the policies that we have are covered. Um, our member retained limit is up to a certain amount depending on what type of um, claim it is. Let's say our member retained limit is $50,000 and the claim is 100000 The district is responsible for that member retained limit amount and then the difference is paid through the policy. And those show up in a different fund? It does not hit our funds at all other than that our member retained limit. Well, what you pay the insurance. Yes. But, but yeah. do they show up in a one or do they show up in a different fund? If we do have to pay out the retainer, where does it come out of? A property and liability insurance, 5410. These are very specific questions. Well, that's how I know, you well, get into them very well. <laughs> the categories are, are a little nebulous. So you didn't tell you there. there'd be a pop quiz? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me or for you? <laughs> I mean, that, are you, is someone still going to tell us what the non-instructional other is? Because yeah, that's it's, $2 million. Dollars. It's kind of a catch-all, <coughs> and I don't off the top of my head, so we'll let you guys know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So just to make sure, um, Jeff Wojcik has joined us, Anne Sherb has joined us, David LeClaire has joined us, and I think that's everybody, right? Okay. So are we done torturing Heather? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Heather. Okay. My pleasure. We'll bring you back for another session. We're not done okay. with you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go. Okay. You're welcome. You don't want to stay. Yeah. It's really fun yeah. in here. Oh. All right, so the next thing on the agenda is the 50%, no, I'm sorry, the bond calculation. And I made, oh, the 50% one? You misspoke. You can start? Okay. Uh, the bond calculation, and I made a mistake. Uh, Crystal is actually, from what I understand, on vacation today. Uh, so we have the presentation that she has presented. So what I would like to do is kind of just go through, if there are any questions that can be answered by Ryan, I'd appreciate it. But if there are questions that we have, we will do the same thing with the list of follow-up items and bring it back to the group. Does that work? Yeah. Perfect. Okay? Okay. So everybody has a handout? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So the 2014 FON, uh, I'm just going to kind of go through and you stop me if, if you need me to, but the total full-time equivalent faculty or FTEF attributed to instruction and non-instructional full-time faculty based on Title V uh, for the district is 372.6. The total FTEF attributable to instructional and non-instructional part-time faculty based on Title V for the district is 428.28. Total FTEF for full-time faculty and part-time faculty, those two lines, one and two added together is 800.28. And the percentage of FTEF attributed to full-time faculty is 46.5%. So the 2014 full-time faculty obligation is 358, which means that there's an obligation for an additional 14 and a half percent. No, reverse that. It means we're 14 over. Oh, we're 14, 14 over. over. So plus. We're 14. So we're 14 <coughs> over? Yeah, because our full, we have full-time at 372 and our obligation's at 358. But the, the bigger issue is projecting to next year because you have to get ready for meeting your obligation in 15. And that's what's mm -hmm. And that's what's okay. coming. All right. Uh, you have a question. Yeah. So the obligation is 50%. No. The obligation is actually, uh, there's two different numbers. The first number is the actual percentage, but almost no college actually reaches the 75%. It's 75%, not 50%. Okay. And so that what the faculty obligation number is, is the number set by the state for what you need to reach to show that you're making adequate progress towards getting to the 75 percent. Hmm. Do they, oh, right, I'm sorry. Yes. Do they 
say what adequate is? What, what's they, adequate they base is? the um, they base the fawn and how much your fawn should go up. Um, they base that on your FTS growth. So in times in which there's great FTS growth, they expect you to grow your full-time faculty oh, okay. at, at a reasonable rate. In times when they are doing what they call workload reductions, which right. is uh, a bad term for cutting the hell out of your classes, uh, then they, they don't okay. grow the fawn, and in some cases they actually reduced them. Um, and that's kind of where we were at. So. so if you look at page two, Ryan. Yes. Saying that we currently have 372 faculty kind of seems like fun money since we really only have 348. So why are we calling it 372? Because we're following the guidelines and the state law and the code that tell us how to calculate this. There's a couple of issues. Uh, as an example, let's say a large number of people retire in June and you found out that they're going to retire in May. There's absolutely no way you can replace those full-time faculty members between May and October, which is when they calculate the fawn. So the, uh, the, the law and the code allows you to count those people who are already retired in your fawn for that year. Now, you'll have to catch up the next year, which is why you have to monitor your retirements very carefully. But um, it's, it's just a way that the state tells us to calculate it. Let's talk about the interims. The interims? Okay. These people have been deans for more than a year, mm -hmm. but they're continuing to be called faculty. For the purposes of uh, the fund, it appears so. How long are we going to do that for? Uh, well, uh, technically, we shouldn't have people be entering that long, so, and I think people are working on it. So is that part of, I mean, is that acceptable as part of the calculation? I'd have to look at the exact code. But um, usually when people are taking on uh, different positions or when they go on sabbatical, as long as they have the ability to go back into the faculty, they, they usually do count. Okay. Um, so but I'd have to look specifically. Just getting back to page one. So yes. um, this is a law that requires us to have 75% of our faculty be full time. Or hit your font. Yeah. And we're at 46%. That's correct. How does that relate to other people's? You see a wide range across the state, and I'll give an example of the college I went to, where uh, East LA was actually one of the lower in the LA district, or kind of in the middle, and we were at about 58%. Uh, but talk about a little bit of funny money, uh, more than 10% of the FTS calculated, or that we got at East, was from in-service training agreements, and those part-time faculty, because they were paid for by an outside agency that we took under our accreditation, didn't count at all. So uh, the fawn actually, uh, the, the percentage looked a lot better in East than it would have been had we been offering those classes ourselves. If, had we been offer, offering those classes ourselves, we would look the same as Pasadena. Uh, I've seen smaller colleges, uh, much higher. I've seen smaller colleges in the 70s or the high 60s um, because if you have 75 faculty and you hire 10 faculty, boy, is that a, a big jump. Yeah. Uh, here we to do the equivalent we have to hire 35 which is, is our plan which is what our plan is <laughs> so which makes the three people on this side of the table go Ugh. <laughs> 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 okay I'm sorry was, was that, there a follow-up so if we only need to get from 372 to 382 why would we hire 35 people well I, I think that there's a couple of reasons now if you're asking me why I think it would be a good strategic decision to do so. Number one, no, no, we... I don't want to talk about strategy. I want to talk about numbers. <laughs> In terms These of These are real numbers. Right. Yeah. Technically, we wouldn't need to. But uh, what you need to do is you need... The problem is you're... When you're, when you're deciding that we're going to hire 35, you don't know how many people are going to retire by, by around February, March, which is what the, the cutoff line is. If people retire prior to that, um, they'll be excluded from the fawn in 15. Uh, early retirements versus late retirements. So you have to you, you have to guess how many people you think are going to turn in re retirement paperwork, which is why it's always a good thing to tell your colleagues to be diligent about getting paperwork in because um, it, it helps with the planning. So that's why. So if you if you think ten people are going to are going to turn in paperwork by December, 
well, you need to, you need to in your calculations say, well, we, we don't just need to get from 372 to our advance, which is uh, 382. We don't just need those 10. We need an additional 10 because we know these people are retiring in advance enough that we should be able to replace the positions, not necessarily that person. Like, Rod retires, we don't have to replace him for his discipline. We just have to replace the body. So if uh, faculty are offered a retirement uh, and they settle on a contract and there's a retirement uh, incentive, mm -hmm. um, and a whole bunch of people retire mm -hmm. after February. February, March. I, it, it, the, the, the code actually has a specific number of uh, working days, so I'd have to count backwards. And because we shifted our schedule from ending in June to ending in May, it throws that completely off. But they don't need to announce till May, maybe, right? If they announce in May, then... They're not going to get a certain... Well, when do you have to... The deadline is what it is, and it's pretty early on. Yeah. Oh, it'll be early. No, but so I, I think it's after that deadline. That, it's I that's what I'm asking. It's purposely it? after that deadline, so they don't have I to replace those too. people for another year. Well, because you don't have time to replace right. them. Right. Well, I, yeah, I'm not, okay. I'm not okay, okay, yeah, I'm negative about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I just want to bring us back. Okay. So uh, was your question answered about the 10th? Okay. So on the last page, what Crystal did for us was give us a breakdown of the districts, the calculated advance, the calculated P2, and the compliance final number for fall 13, the same thing for 14, and then the projected for 15. Um, and so what she wanted to do was just show where we are in comparison to and our... what's head count? The head... You, what does it mean? Or what the, yeah. the number of people, students that we serve? Wait, which which type okay. of head count? Yeah. Okay. yeah. At the end of yes. the column here. FTES? No. Enrollments? Body. Bodies. 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 Yeah. Okay. 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 So you'd be taking one unit PE class or, or right. 19 no. units okay. and they're yeah. crazy. Okay. And they're one yeah. Yeah. Okay. But this projected is not our calculator. That's a two different things. Right. When you say calculating as in? Well, see, the columns for real years say calculated advance, calculated a P2. Correct. Right. Okay, so this is just projected by the state? Yeah. Projects mm -hmm. it. Yes, by the state. And they do that based on our projections we give them in relationship to our FTS. Now, if we end up generating less growth than we anticipated, you would see this number reduced. If we ended up actually getting paid for more growth than we had originally projected, then you could possibly see it go up. And when is our actual calculated advance due? I thought it was already due. Uh, I believe the calculated advance... Oh, wait, you're talking about what we submit in terms of what we have? Uh -huh. Yeah, we submit that in November. But we submitted about two weeks ago. Okay, what is that number? Well, that's, that's the number, the uh, 372.6 on the front. Now I'm talking about the 15. Oh, for 15? Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we won't do that until next November. We don't calculate ourselves what we think it's gonna be, no? Well, I'm sure we do, but we don't submit anything to the state. Okay. The state only uh, asks us to calculate in October, and then it's due in November. So why this why strategic decision to hire 35 faculty? Um, I probably shouldn't speak out of turn because uh, you know I don't make those decisions, but I would say that if there is going to be a SERP, you don't want to end up in a year when you have to hire 50 or 60 faculty members. You want to spread out the retirement replacements. Okay. Um, because I, I think everybody on that side of the table would uh, quit if we had to hire 60 in one semester. But that's, if you want, we can ask the question and bring it back to mm -hmm. the next meeting. The difficulty is I'm, that I'm, it's a month I, later. I know it's a very popular answer with the faculty, so you don't need to bring back an answer. <laughs> <laughs> They're happy. Nobody's going to complain. <laughs> no one's complaining. Okay. So anything else about the farm? Any questions that you'd like us to follow up on? You good? Okay. okay. All right. So those were the two items on the agenda. The last two items that we have were reading materials. One is from the uh, legislative analyst office based on the California's fiscal outlook for 1516. And the second document is a three page document, really a two page document, from School Services of California. And it's kind of a very high level 
review of what the LAO oh, okay. LAO's office is saying. So if you don't want to go through this 60-page document, you have a two-page document. So I'm just going to kind of read through the highlights of the document so you know what's going on. But the LAO projections are saying that the minimum funding guarantee for community colleges is especially favorable for the near term. The LAO forecasts that higher state revenues will drive the minimum guarantee from $60.9 billion as enacted in the 14-15 state budget to $65.8 billion in the 15-16 budget under its current forecast. So things are good. They're moving in the right direction. Uh, the forecast identifies about $6.5 billion in new ongoing revenues for uh, K-14. through the state revenue growth is strong in the near term, and I'm emphasizing near term both times because uh, it sounds like things are going to be slowing down in future years. The LAO forecasts a stronger California economy in the current calendar year than the Department of Finance projected in uh, the May revision. This translates into a higher revenue forecast with the LAO projecting $2 billion more than the State Budget Act estimate for 1415. So we all know that Governor Brown has been very conservative. There was this back and forth between the LAO and the governor related to uh, the fiscal year budget. The governor won out, he, he stood firm, but the LAO's projections are seeming to be um, a better revenue cycle than what the, the governor put into the, bu the budget, which is good. He was being very um, conservative. The LAO projects that revenue growth of 3.7% will happen in fiscal year 15-16, or an increase of about $4 billion. The LAO's forecast stretches to the fiscal year 2019-20, and the forecast shows state revenue growth slowing for an average of, from an average of 4.9% annually from 14-15 fiscal year uh, through 17-18 fiscal year to 2.3% by fiscal year 1920. So again, in the near term, things are looking very good. Long term, we're not quite sure, but definitely slowing down. Uh, personal income tax revenue growth slows to 1.2% in fiscal year 1920, largely as a result of the expiration of the higher tax rates of Proposition 30, or uh, we call them the Educational Protection Act dollars that we get. And in fiscal year, what are we in? 1415, the district got um, about $16 million in EPA. That's going to be going away by the end of. 1920. We're not quite sure how that's so going to be. Aren't fixed. there like bill, several bills in the assembly for? Yeah. There's the extension. There's the well. I don't know if it's extension, but potentially going back out to the voters for another vote. Yeah. Um, but I can't see how they're going to let this. I mean, it can expire. Expire, but I don't know how the state's not going to step in. It just doesn't. Yeah, it was sense. a lifeline. Yeah. Yeah. It was the ability for us to continue to function without cutting, so the state could re direct those dollars somewhere else to pay down what those needs were, and then when these things went away, or at least my understanding, when these taxes went away, the funding would go back to where it was before those, uh, before the voters voted that extension or those taxes in. But you never know. All right, so apart from the consequences of the loss of Proposition 30 tax rates, the LAO's forecast for the underlying economy is, is for steady, though not spectacular, growth. However, Proposition 98 goes up, up, and away. Under the LAO's forecast, the 1314 14 Proposition 98 guarantee is revised upward by $177 million. As a result of stronger state revenues and a, and a provision in the 1415 State Budget Act that calls for repayment of apportionment deferrals, if actual revenues exceed the forecast, the LAO predicts that all of the $992 million in remaining K-14 apportionment deferrals will be terminated by the end of the fiscal year. And so what that means for us is by the middle of July, and we're hoping prior to that, if revenue comes in, that's about a million dollar, $1.8 million for the district. Ongoing or one time? Uh, I believe ongoing. Yeah, it's a part of our apportionment, so ongoing. Yeah, and we're actually looking at our numbers to make sure that that's a part of it. All right, as a result, did I read that? Mm -hmm. I did. Local tax revenues help the state. So for fiscal year 15-16, they are anticipating an increase in the local property tax. And the reason why I wanted to bring that up was because people, I think, believe when property tax mm -hmm. goes up, there's additional revenue to the district. 
and that's not quite accurate. When property taxes go up and we get additional revenue, the state apportionment goes down. It's a balancing act between the two. We don't get our apportionment and then whatever the additional property taxes are. Same thing with tuition, by the way. Yeah. When tuition goes up, the state pays us less. Right. But um, now some districts are untethered from that situation, yes. like Miracosta. Yes. Have we ever done the analysis on our situation? Is that because they're basic aid? Yeah. 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 Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So Is that'd it, be something to look at. Yeah, because there was discussion of that in this <coughs> committee you know, two and a half, maybe two and a half yeah. years ago. There was talk of it, um, of looking into it, okay. if, if it were beneficial to us. I've also been told it's not really up to you. <laughs> yeah, but, I don't think so either. So, but, um, but anyway. But you, districts can switch, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they that's can. what I was told. They no, I've, I've heard. One. But, no, but I've I know we were talking that. about it, looking into it, doing an analysis to see if we would be better off living with our local taxes as opposed to what the state funding is. I mean, that's what Miracosta does, and that's why <laughs> they are, you know, all the other envy of us. every faculty in the church. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so those were just the highlights of this report. I hope I was the side commentary as we went through was kind of able to answer the questions, but are there any questions that I would hopefully be able to answer based on the LAO's report? Thank you. Okay. Well, maybe looking into the, the basic aid versus the... Um, yeah, yeah. But we, can, we should look into that. Sure, and I'll also I mean, ask if we've done it LAO once report. before. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm sure all the departments are experiencing the same thing this past semester, but the, the library has been asked to cut back on its budget. Uh, with this additional funding coming in, is, are we going to revisit that? Probably not. It's very tight. Um, they did mention somewhere in the middle of that document that uh, they're taking a more serious look at capping reserves. I know maybe that's been talked about for a while, but are, is that getting more serious, and what's the level they're talking about? I haven't heard anything in quite some time, and what I recall was it wasn't directed at the community colleges, it was directed at the K through 12. Okay. Because the K through 12s were locking away money left and right, and I think what the governor is trying to do, if he moves forward with it, is say, just like the community colleges have a minimum requirement of putting away 5%, right. you have a maximum requirement of X amount of dollars. So those, those dollars that you do get, you cannot put away for future right. needs, for brand new buildings or whatever. Well, that's a bad example, but for equipment. You have to use it the year you get it to educate students and to bring in specialists and do what you need to do. Well, some people think we pack away more than we probably should. And so... And it, I, I, yeah. It could apply. Are you one of them? Did you just say you were one of them? <laughs> that we pack way more? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, our reserves are uh, more than 5%. So. Our reserves, we are actually, um, and if you want, uh, in the next meeting, I will bring in the slide, and it's actually on the fiscal website, but there is a slide where we showed where we fall in comparison to the other districts, okay. and we're pretty much right in the middle okay. of our um, of reserves. Some districts good for have none, some districts have really good. Um, if I recall correctly, we're about 15%. So we have in the upper 15. Uh, no, we're no, in the 15 middle. Percent. Yeah. 15 percent of our oh, general. 50 percent is the how much fund one. Yeah. 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 So I want to say it's about 12 million in locked away reserves and about six and a half million in reserves for. Yeah, I, I, that's what I heard. Yeah. But um, there are other funds that if you looked at the whole thing as one big reserve fund, um, that is a much greater number. In what's the gas before the fog, for instance? Uh, so, so I, I mean, I'm I'm so old that I remember when the state came to North Orange County and took 19 million dollars away because we were a better bank than we were a school district. Wow. And uh, so it, it has happened in the past, but it hasn't happened in, in the recent past. You got to be real careful with those gas fees, though. That's also something that a lot of people have gotten pegged with uh, yeah. on accreditation. Yeah. No, I mean it's it's real, and so it's you know you have to you have to have some method of addressing it. Mm -hmm. um, question is is have we already addressed it, and we're good enough? And I know what our target is, and we're not there. Um, but is our target high artificially? And because of everybody over the age of 55 retired in one year, we're not there. 
but that was the, that was the target that was created. Mm -hmm. Well, and the targets are based off of actuarial reports. Yeah. So you're right. We're not far from where and we the should. The the actuarial company was total compensation. That's right. Why you have concerns? <laughs> Just the name alone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted I like to, the to put out there that uh, one of the other issues that you got to be careful of with the reserve was uh, there was a time period, thank God we don't have this anymore, when the legislature wasn't passing um, budgets until October-ish. Yeah. And those districts that did not have ample reserves to cover payroll actually had to take out loans and then pay interest. Uh, for those couple of months, and it was costing districts hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and I will say, 15 may sound high, but I, I was on an accreditation visit recently where during the downtime, the district I visited was over 30. Yeah. Which that seemed. Yeah. But I think, see, I, anyway. That made me cringe a little bit during layoffs. Yeah. Okay, so we've been meeting for about an hour. We're at future agenda items. So far right now we have the reassigned time that uh, request that came up either last month or the month no. before. So we'll have that on the agenda for January 22nd. Are there any other future agenda items? No? All right, let me look at my notes. So for the purpose of this meeting, we are adjourned at 3.35. Well, Our next meeting is January 22nd. Let go, Joe. Joe, the president. <laughs> <laughs>